I am Francisco Munoz Arguello. I am a second year business management student at Fancha College. Before coming to Canada, I was an architect in my home country, Mexico. I knew how to handle my business, how to run it, but I knew that there was some lack of financial and operational training too. So I started looking for a new opportunity and then I came across the business management program at Fanshawe. It would give my family an opportunity to come to a great country and learn so much from you. I know this couldn't have been possible without the support of some great teachers that we have in our faculty. They have made the journey through Fanshawe so good. They are committed and they are people that provide a lot to students. I see my kids, they feel so more secure in the streets. They can go forth and back from school every day and they can even go to the parks by themselves. Everybody in the house is feeling right now that they have succeeded. There is something that I have learned and that is that every day you wake up and you have a new opportunity to start over again. You have the opportunity to start all over in a new country and be successful. You can come to a country where the people are great and to a community like Fancha where the people are great and they are looking for others to succeed too. I have learned how Canadians want to give back to the community and it's all about giving back and I feel now that I can do that in my current position as the finance coordinator with the FSU. I feel proud that we have become part of the community and that there is great people within these walls that you would expect for them to be different and they are so humble and they would support you like this. Thank you. Anyone can belong. This is how you explore, grow, and triumph. This is your time to shine. This is who we are. This is what we do. And you are why we do it. This is Fanshawe. Alrighty, hello, hello world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Fan Experience Live. Whether you are joining us from YouTube or Facebook, we are thrilled to have you here, and I'm delighted to see so many of you joining us uh, from different parts of the world. I saw you are joining us from Sri Lanka, Philippines, Vietnam, Nigeria, India, Bahamas, many different countries, so we are so excited to have you here. Today, we have a unique opportunity to dive deep into the heart of Fanshawe College and what it has to offer. Our panel includes four of our current students from different parts of the world doing different programs at the college, eager to share their first and experiences with all of you. Whether you are still deciding to join Fanshawe or already have your, made your decision on the list, we are here to guide, inform, and answer all your questions. My name is Priyank Mistry, and I work as the Digital Recruitment Specialist at Fanshawe International, based right here in London, Ontario. Today, I have the honor of being the host and the moderator for this session. But before we start, I want to give some few housekeeping notes. 
First being, today's our main focus is on the student experience. So our panelists are here to share just that. For any specific inquiries about application process, offer letters, scholarship, tuition, student visa, we encourage you to reach out to international at fanshawc.ca or book an appointment with one-on-one -on -one with our advisors from different parts of the country or in the world as well. I will share the link during the live session where you need to find that information. But for now, please ask questions to our students that are based on student lifestyle and studying at Fanshawe. Another, another thing I wanted to mention is as this is a public stream, we urge you to avoid sharing any personal information. I see the chat is going so fast. It's even hard to read questions and comments coming in the chat. So please share your thoughts and help us deliver a better session, but avoid sharing personal details such as phone number, email, or website links. Throughout the session, I will be also sharing polls in the YouTube chat section. So please share your thoughts and help us deliver a better session in the future. Now, last but not the least, regarding the format of the session, how we will go about this. So I will ask a variety of questions to our student panel. Uh, for example, what they, why did they choose to come to Canada? Topics covering choosing Fanshawe, process of arriving for study, local hangout spots that they really like, guiding on applying for part-time jobs. Additionally, I will also be taking questions from a chat box. So if you have any inquiries that you would like to ask our current students, please feel free to write them in Facebook comment or YouTube chat box that you see on the right hand side or below of your screen if you're joining us from the phone. Now, without any further ado, a heartfelt thank you to all of our student panelists for dedicating their time today to offer insights and share their unique journey with us. So let's dive into our first question for the session today, starting with Adnai, what's your name, country you are from, when did you arrive in Canada, and your course at Fanshawe College? So, hi guys, my name is Adinai. I'm from Kyrgyz Republic. I came to Canada in April 2023, and I'm taking business marketing co program. And I'm from Kyrgyz Republic. Thank you, welcome to the session, Adnai. Let's go with Mahavir. Hello, my name is Mahavir Kumawat. I am from India. I came here like last year in May 2022. Uh, right now, I'm pursuing general science and arts in Fanshawe College at London. Thank you, Mahavir. Thanks for joining us. Let's go with Chisum. Hi, everyone. My name is Chisum Ejiofo. I'm from Nigeria. I'm currently studying supply chain management and logistics co-op. And I came to Canada in April, which is about six months ago. Right, let's go with Christine. Hello everyone, I'm Drishti Sharma from Bhutan. It has been a year that I'm here. I arrived on August 11th and I'm pursuing tourism and hospitality operations management from the downtown campus. Amazing. Thank you very much for the introduction and thanks to all of our student panel here for the session. So let's just dive into today, today's questions, starting with the first question for Adna. Why did you choose to study in Canada and specifically at Fanshawe College? So let's start where I chose Canada. I had different options, to be honest. I applied to many countries, but I wanted to make my transition to a new country as smooth as possible. And Canada was the country, one of the countries that has the four seasons as my country, like summer, autumn, winter, and spring. And I really like to travel like so bad. And the Canada, it's a multicultural country where you can meet any culture, any nation. You're basically traveling, you can meet different people. And the other reason that I do like most is nature. Canada is so big and so beautiful. You can travel being a student, have fun with your friends. It's really exciting. I thinking that I'm living my Canada dream. And I chose Fanshawe because it was one of the college that replied me within three days. They're so fast and they're working really operatively. And I chose my business pro uh, marketing program because I'm really into it. And I used to run my online internet shop back in my country. And Fanshawe College is providing you experience, more practice that's going to help you in future to get a job. And that was my 
opinion and experience. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Can I ask the same question to Mahavi? Why did you choose to study in Canada and specifically at Fanshawe College? Yeah, so when I was in 10th standard, I saw a dream to go in Canada to study there. So after completing my bachelor's, I have like I thought like to go like UK or US to do my uh, construction project management program, but I didn't get that from I didn't like feel like I should go to US. Then I thought I should be, go to Canada. Then I searched like all the list in Canada. Then finally I decided that Fancho can provide what I'm looking for that. And here I am at Fancho doing, I have completed CPM. Right now I'm doing general arts and science at Fancho College. Amazing. So you have already done one program at yes. Fancho, which is CPM means construction, construction project, project management. management. And you are doing another program at Fancho. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Can I ask the same question to Chisholm on the panel? Why did you choose to study in Canada, specifically at Fancho College? Okay, um, first I chose um, Canada because um, of the welcoming nature of Canadians. They're very friendly. Mm -hmm. So um, that's like my major reason. Then also the um, quality of education that is obtainable here. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada's education is of very high quality. So. That was why I decided to come here for studies. Then um, Fanshawe was recommended to me by a friend that had gone through the school and she was very excited for me to come. And I checked out um, the website and I was very impressed. And just like Adonai said, I got my admission letter very fast. And questions that I asked were responded to very fast. So I was very impressed. And um, the reviews I saw online too uh, were very impressive for me. Amazing, thank you for sharing that. And last but not the least, I would like to ask the same question to Drishti on the panel as well. Yeah, so initially, Canada was not even my plan. I was planning to go to US, but then the process was taking so long. And just like how Ed and I mentioned, that the college was very responsive and I specifically wanted to come to London, Ontario. And then I just had two options for colleges. One was Western University, one was Fanshawe College, and Western was so expensive I could not afford it. So I chose Fanshawe and I am loving it. The experience is so beautiful. That is absolutely one of the reasons that students choose to come to college rather than universities because university institutions are really expensive in Canada when you come here for the first time. Mm -hmm. Apart from many other reasons such as practical learning and more options to choose different programs for, it's one of those reasons that you would choose to study at the college rather than university. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, now, moving on with the next question, continuing with Thrishti, did you use Fanshawe Care's arrival services when you arrived here in Canada, which is the pickup from Toronto to London? If you did, can you share more experience about it? Yes, I did avail the shuttle service that Fanshawe had offered. Um, it costed me nothing. Um, I was initially planning to take a flight from Toronto to London, but then the flights were so expensive and I did not want to pay because I had to look for my accommodation and everything and I wanted to save a bit because I knew there's going to be struggle because it's all by myself. So I availed that and trust me, like it was one of the best decisions that I availed it because the person who drove me to London, he... He was so generous and then he started sharing his own experience when he traveled to Greece and how he overcame and he landed up giving me a lot of tips on how to survive, what to do first. Um, so it was really helpful. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad to know you had a great experience when you arrived here. So just to everyone, let everyone know who are planning to study at Fanshawe College or arriving in January or different intakes in the future, Fanshawe offers Fanshawe Care services where every student who is coming from different country, when they arrive to the Toronto International Airport, we offer a free pickup service where we can take you from Toronto Airport to the London city. So thank you so much, Drishti, for sharing that. Now, as you can see in the chat, I've shared a poll. So that is just a first poll that I'm uh, I've shared which I'll, one of those, one of many which I'll be sharing throughout the stream. So please answer the question in the poll, which is, are you eager to study in Canada? We would like to know, right? So thank you so much. Moving on to the next question for Mahavir. What's the best part about living in London? Because many people have a conception that 
uh, you would want to stay in Toronto and not a city like London. So can you explain a little bit what's the best part for you about living in London because you have been here for a longer time? Well, I will say I have like, I choose the best city to live in London. Like, but yeah, I can still give, we can have like an exposure of uh, natural as well as uh, more, uh, metropolitan cities. So we can see like a lot of parks over here. So, so I'm an, I'm a kind of person who loves nature. So I can go on trails, I can spend time and it's good. As well as on the other side, we can say we have metropolitans. We have everything from malls to game zones and everything, pubs and restaurants. So yeah, it's kind of like everything in one city. That's uh, how the London is. And I really like it's very the best thing that it's very cheap. It's uh, as compared to other cities, like you can have like a cheap accommodations. Um, I think you can reach anywhere in like in 15 minutes. We have good bus routes and everything. That's why how this is London. And I, I really like living in London. So, yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Can I ask the same question to Adnai? What do you think is the best part of living in London, Ontario? To be honest, I think it's a student town. Like wherever I go, I see the students. I'm making new friends, new connections. And the town is like so small. So you're real close with each other. You're basically living in a uh, like neighborhood. And it's really close to Toronto. So you can like travel if you want sometimes hang out in the megapolis. You can just go there two hours from London. And it's really easy to find a job here because like basically people are know that you're a student and they're trying to help you out. So welcome to London. <laughs> Amazing. I have another question to ask to Dristi. Can you describe a typical day as an international student? So the things that you go from starting your morning to the end of the day. So initially, I was in a pressure that I have to make a living here. So all that I did was work, college, work, college. But now that it has been a year, I realized the importance of balancing work and life. You know, life is not always about earning money. So what I do is I go to my college. I, I have some time for myself because I work three days a week. So I have like four days for myself. So I just hang out enjoy the environment that London has to offer. It's really beautiful, like it's it's worth everything. So I go around with my friends. I, I do have a balance between my work and my college life and that allows me to focus on my studies too. At the same time, without having any pressure, I'm managing everything around me. Fantastic, that is so true to manage your work as well as study life is really important we do have that question later in the session that i will ask to everybody and share their experience about how do you manage work study life balance but before that i would like to ask the same question to chisholm can you explain what's the describe a typical day as an international student on the campus okay so for me um, um on campus i spend most of my time in class and um, after class I get to interact with my classmates either on how to proceed with the assignments or group work that we're giving to us. And um, yeah, then they also um, held activities that we go to, well, the dance classes and yoga classes that we go to, the, um, to attend sometimes in the evenings after classes. Yeah, and it's actually fun. So it's a way, like um, Tristan said, of um, balancing school, work life, yeah. Amazing. All right, moving on to the next question. For Adnai, what's the highlight of your program? You mentioned that you are currently doing marketing program. So can you mention a few of the highlights of the program, for example, talking about your professors or assignments or projects you're working on, anything that you would like to share about your program? Oh, yeah, for sure. So I will start that it's a really exciting program. To be honest, it's not easy, but it's not so hard. It's more like entertaining, I guess. And the thing that I like most, it's working with my classmates, having fun. We do those discussions. And I guess that professors are more like friends with us. Like the way we communicate is really different in comparison to my country. In my country, like pupil, professor, all straight, straight. Here, you're like hanging out with professors, talking with them. So it's really enjoyable to learn. And about the projects, always it's really interactive. It's not about writing, writing, or like speaking, speaking. It's all mixed up. And I think it's really, really wonderful. Like, I do like it. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Can I ask the same question to Mahavir? 
uh, what's the highlight of your program, whether it was CPM that you did or the current program that you're doing at Fanshawe? Uh, so I will start with the CPM. Uh, like when I like we have a different uh, environment in India, like how we studies, we like we can't be frank with our professors or not. So but here we can ask anything and they are so chill that if if I ask them like, hey, can I do this after like I have to do that? He was like, yeah, that's fine. And I, I really lot like those uh, professors don't think. Uh, talking about the projects, I had done like uh, two main projects in my CPM and it was great experience. I have like I had learned a lot of things from uh, as well as I get like uh, my professor helped a lot of uh, things from in, prof uh, in my project. For example, when I was doing my the last uh, project, the I was stuck in a um, Excel file, so I just went to him and asked like, "Can you help this?" And he helped me like a lot. And finally, I passed that subject with A grade. And I thanks to that <laughs> professor, it was like great. <laughs> And talking about this course, this course is I have like I have to select whatever course I have to do. Like I have to uh, select ten of uh, ten subjects in two semesters. So I cl cleared my first sem and second sem I choose like uh, what I want to be studies like related to cooking, related to pop culture, uh, music. Well, like I'm from India, so we have different culture over there. So I want to learn about Canada and the uh, Western countries. So I choose those subjects. And it's good. It's the the environment in the class is so awesome. They like we share, the professor share all those videos, and it's kind of great experience learning at Fancho and and really uh, enjoying learning here. Amazing! Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, can I move on to Chisholm asking her about how does Canada's education system differ from your home country? As you mentioned in your introduction, that you are from Nigeria. Do you think there is any difference in terms of education system in Canada versus the education system that you had back home in Nigeria? Okay, um, so there are a number of um, differences between the educational system here and um, my, my home country, but the one that uh, stands out is actually the, the quality, the high quality of education and the practical skills that um, Canadian institutions provide. Um, also, Canada provides um, opportunities for students to work while studying. So a lot of students use these part-time jobs to pay their bills. So it's quite um, flexible time for work and time for for studies. Yeah. So those are like the major uh, differences I can point out between Canada and my home country. Amazing. Can I ask the same question to Dristi as well? So in Bhutan, what we do is it's always like learn from the text, like whatever is there in the text, you just memorize and you just, you, you do not tend to think outside the box. But here, because we have people from all over the world and there are different perspectives and different way of life and different way of thinking, here it allows us to think something that we would have never thought about. Like, so um, that is the key highlight. And also, I think it is the diversity that is in here that allows us to not only learn about the course that we are studying, but also it allows us to learn about the country, the way of living, and it makes us more interculturally aware. And we become more familiar to what different countries offer and what they have um, in similar to my country. So I think that is the key highlight. That is so true. Really good, in really good uh, comments about the cultural difference and understanding what every country has to offer that you can see here that might not be the case from your home country. Now, for everybody who is watching us live, can I get some thumbs up or hearts in the chat section for the students who are joining us today and sharing their experiences? They would love to see that as well. So any comments that you share will show up on the screen for a while. So send some thumbs up or hearts to show the support for the students who are sharing their experiences here. All right. Apart from that, moving on to the next question for Mahavir. Do you have a favorite spot to hang out on the campus or off campus? Uh, yeah, I have both. Uh, talking about the campus, I'm, I'm kind of person who loves sports and gaming. So I always like whenever I get like free time, I go to gaming room. I play, we have like a lot of games there, like Xbox, PS and computer games. So I go there, spend my time like almost uh, at least 
two to three hours a week yeah and after that i have one more sports where i spend most of the time it's gym where i spend like uh, we have a like great gym i it's 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 awesome so i spend most of the time there talking about the off the campus i like to go out like trails and there and my best part uh, my best place i will say that springbank park so i usually go there we have a river as a trail and nature's we can see like birds and people used to like walk there and i really like that spot so if i go there i can spend like 10 hours i can sit on one place it's it's awesome so yeah that's that's a place i love very much in london and it's on off campus and in campus Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. So the gym on campus is fantastic. I absolutely relate to that. When I was a student, I also utilized it. I would like to ask the same question to Adnai. Do you have any favorite spot to hang out on or off campus that you really enjoy? Oh, yes. As we mentioned, we have a lot of activities on campus. And my favorite one is Bambinton. But my friends are like more into volleyball. So whether you like basketball, badminton, whatever, we all have this on campus. And about activities out of campus, I really do like bubble tea, so I'm like a big freak. So sometimes I like to hang out in Coco, Mingle, in downtown. It's the place where you can eat really big portion of fast food. And it's really yummy. <laughs> and if you like to dance and hang out sometimes, chillax, you can go to Jack's. It's a club where I think all the students hanging out. Oh, yeah, you can see on the photos. <laughs> Welcome. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, for Thristi, do you think volunteering as a student is important for anybody who is studying in Canada? And if so, why? Yes, volunteering plays a very important role when you are in Canada. I'll give you my own example. I was a volunteer at Red Squad. Uh, it is a volunteering group uh, in where we help in coordinating events and organizing events whenever there are big events. Uh, so while I was volunteering there, it made me capable. Like it, it, it basically built my confidence. Like whatever I'm saying here. However, I'm speaking to you is all because of that volunteering experience that I've had. While volunteering, uh, what we do is there are a bunch of people like you. We don't even know with whom we are placed. So we just go to places and then that allows us to communicate with each other. And then that is how we tend to be more confident and more outspoken. So volunteering also plays a role in where like you get acknowledgments like it is very important for you to have positive references. So it helps you to connect with right people with whom you can ask for references once you're done with college, because every big decision in here needs a reference. And I think it is a great way to um, get references by volunteering and being active when the college is offering opportunities. Amazing. Thank you so much for that insight on volunteering when you are studying as a student. It is absolutely imperative and important. If you volunteer, there are many, many benefits, as Trishti has mentioned. One thing I would like to uh, say in the, the stream here is that all of the students who are on the stream right now, they are volunteering with us at Fanshaw International. They are called digital ambassadors. So I would like to show and little, plug a little bit of the program here in the, uh, in the session as well. Because right now, what you're seeing is just four of the digital ambassadors we have. But the group of the ambassadors that we have is in term numbers of 80 plus digital ambassadors. What do they do? They are here online, able to chat with you. How do you do that? First thing you will ask. So I will show the link in the chat, in the screen here that you are able to see. If you would like to chat with Tristi Chisholm, Mahavir, Adna here, or more than 80 plus other digital ambassadors uh, on your phone, you can do that by going to the, the link that is shown on the screen here. I will also show exactly how the page looks like. When you go on this link, you will see the ambassadors listed. You will also be able to see the photos and videos they shared on that. There is FAQ. And on the screen, you will be able to see how many ambassadors, not just the three showing on the screen, but once you go in the page, you can see we have students from more than 50 different countries doing more than 50 different programs at Fanshawe. So if you are planning to come to Fanshawe or planning to study in Canada and have not decided yet, 
and would like to hear a firsthand experience, you can chat with any of the students that you see on the screen. To do that, all you do is go to bit.ly uh, slash Fanshawe chat and chat with them. All righty. Continuing with the session, I will ask the question to Chisholm. How does volunteering as Fanshawe International Digital Ambassador has benefited you? Um, first of all, it's I enjoy um, the interaction with other students from other programs and also students from other campuses. Um, so volunteering also um, gives me the opportunity to help future students uh, by sharing my experience and answering their questions because I was once in their shoes. I was very anxious before I came here to Canada. So um, being part of your journey to coming to Canada as a um, financial student is actually very satisfying. It's, it's good to know that I was part of that journey through the digital, um, uh, digital ambassador platform. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Can I ask the same question to Mahavir? How does volunteering as Fanshawe International Digital Ambassador has helped you or benefited you? Uh, it's helped me like a lot in a lot of things. First of all, I've like I met new people from different countries. Like you can say, like all of them are from different countries. Uh, I know like different cultures from doing them. But the best thing I think I happened after uh, joining this for volunteering. I gain like a lot of uh, help from people. So I get to know like how things work in the chain. Well, uh, I really like helping people. So I, cho I choose to be a, like a volunteer in this uh, ambassador uh, volunteering. When when I was like in India and I was trying to like seeking for help, there was no one like I didn't know about this brand ambassador thing that there is someone who can help us. But I was looking like how to fill the form, how to fill the international form, what thing have to done, how to fill the fan card. So it was so chaotic at that time. So I was so stressed that how we, I will do those things, how will I will go there and do like manage everything. But after joining this um, brand business thing, I can help like I get like every day a lot of questions like how to do and I'm so happy to help those uh, persons. So I feel so relaxed that I'm able to help someone who is in like they're in problem or like so stressed about how to how to get the things in Canada, like how the things will work, how we can we register for this and that. Yeah. So I really like those things, helping people. And this is the whole experience I get it from volunteering thing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Moving on to the next question for Adnai. Whenever you come to a new country like Canada as a student, all of you who are planning to come here, you will also need to find an accommodation. So it is really important to find the place that you want to stay. So I would like to ask a question to Adnai. Uh, can you talk about finding an accommodation experience, finding a house and a place to stay? Oh yeah, hi guys. I have a really good example and experience of getting a rental here. It's really important to find a person you know, or better, to rent an accommodation in college residency. Because from my own experience, I get I get scammed when I first came to Canada. I paid for my room without even seeing it in person, to be honest, yeah. And like, it's a big amount of money. I was so depressed, I was so sad. Like, money just gone and no room. <laughs> I, I stayed outside for two days, can you imagine? And people, people helped me from college, like my classmates. So I'm really thankful to them. And it's better if you like gonna find an agent or gonna find friends or people from a country that you know, you, you can connect them through the video. Like it's really important in Canada because rental lease here, like if you sign something, you cannot unsign it. So before sending something, read. Don't be like me. I, I like literally sign it. Oh yeah, I'm coming to Canada. Oh yes, I like this room. And what? Nothing. So it's better to if you're new here to rent Airbnb for like one week. So within the week you're gonna be in Canada. You can check the rooms in person, talk to the owner of the houses, and somehow to rent the room that you gonna like. And it's better to rent the house with your friends if you could but it's going to be kind of pricey but comfortable but the best option is to rent the residence of the college because it's going to be safe like you're going to save much more than you think yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i'm so sorry to hear that you had to go through that experience where you had to yeah. stay 
out for two days when you arrive here first time. So that is absolutely important, even though uh, Adnai joked about it, but it is not a joke. So finding an accommodation and not being scam is important. So any country where you go, there are scams and online um, issues happening. So you need to make sure when you arrive here before coming over, you don't pay the money up front or you go through the websites that are official. Another thing you can do is you can join our Fanshawe Cares arrival sessions. So we have before the start of the intake, we will send you an email that you have signed up for or applied from the email will be about financial care arrival services where we have different sessions about career about accommodation about security about arrival sessions everything in, in between that you will need to know when you come here so make sure you join those sessions and know more about how to find the right accommodation or if you are not sure what to do and if you're not able to join the session just reach out to us we have our email is international at fanshawc.ca or if you have questions about accommodation you can reach out to fanshaw cares at fanshawc.ca and we are able to provide you the official links that might help you to find the right accommodation but what adnai mentioned it's it is one of the experience that students faces when they arrive here so make sure that you find the right place or know the right people when you come here in terms of accommodation. Thank you for sharing that, Adnai. Uh, let's move on to another important topic. Everyone who comes here wants to work part time while doing the study, right? So it is important to see the experience and get the information from our panel here. So I would like to ask uh, Drishti, starting with Drishti in terms of, do you work part time? And where did you find the job in terms of can you share the experience of applying for the job? Did you bring in your resume? Did you make any changes to the resume? Did you utilize career services? Anything at all that you can share with our audience? Um, yes, I do work part-time. As I mentioned earlier, I work three days in a week. Um, and while applying for it, it was like I mostly used an app that is called as uh, Indeed here, which is used for job applications. and. It was a bit of struggle because when I when I came in, I had no idea on how to go about and I was completely lost. I did not know how to start. Uh, so it was a bit of struggle. But after a month, I heard back at the very same app. Uh, there, there's this company called Boxcar Donuts. Uh, I am still working there with them. And it, it was a very wonderful experience. But then the initial part was a hassle. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Can I ask the same question to Chisholm? Do you work part time? If so, can you share the experience? OK, yes, I do work um, part time with a logistics um, provider. So before then, it was actually a struggle to get a part time job. But I also sought um, counsel from uh, the career services um, office at Fanshawe. So um, I got um, guidance on how to um, prepare resumes for part-time jobs and how to customize them and how to stand out. And yeah, their, their counsel was very um, helpful. But the job I got now was actually through a friend, a referral. Yeah, that was how I got the job. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Referrals are really important. Reaching out to career services at the college is really important. If you're not sure when you come <coughs> here and applying for part time jobs, the resume in Canada looks different than maybe from your home country. So we have career services here that could assist you in creating and crafting your resume that might suit better to Canadian employer. Can I ask the same question to Mahavir? Do you work part time? If so, can you share a little bit of process of how did you apply? How did you got the job? Did you got it from the reference or anything else? Well, I am so lucky in that part. Like uh, I made connection when I was in India. I joined the Fanshawe page. I, I talked to the ex students. I make them like, can how can I get the job? And they helped me a lot. When I landed here, I get my job in the first day. I, I got a job at Amazon in, in a factory, but it was part time. So, yeah, so I did for like two months. Then I was get hired at Jack Esther as a chef. So I'm working as Jack Esther as a chef, as well as uh, I do another part job, part time job as security guard in club. So yeah, I do two, do two jobs. I manage everything. But yeah, I think the connections and contacts are necessary here. If you want any job, you need a connection because if you don't have any referral, no one is like asking you like how you get the job. 
Like she's like, no, we don't have job. But I have friends. I talk to them that, hey, I, I'm looking for a job. They help me. And I got that job like instantly. I didn't have to like go here and there, like taking my resumes. Like to, I have to drop here and there. No, I just make contacts. And yeah, it's work for me. And I get, I'm, I think I like got like four or five jobs still in one year. I had changed. Yeah, this is how like I get the, my part-time jobs here. Amazing. Thank you for... Progress. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. But I do like to mention that you were lucky enough to get it on the first day. Yes. Not everyone who comes here might be lucky enough with the context of friends and will be able to get the job on first day. And again, I want to emphasize, even though everyone wants to work part time while they are studying, sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's to get an exposure in the Canadian working environment as well. But the first and foremost important thing you should be focused on is your study. Right. So first thing when you arrive here is you should learn the education system, get acclimatized with the environment of the college, do a couple of assignments and then maybe month or month and a half, you can start applying. Sometime you could be lucky just as Mahavir and get the job on the first day or you might get it on the one week or one month. It depends. Right. So the first thing you need to remember is focus on your study and then go for the part time job. All right. Moving on to the next question. Can I ask uh, Adne, how are you preparing for a Canadian winter? Because we have a winter coming up in the next couple of months. A really fun topic for anyone who, who's coming first time in January intake. They would like to know, well, how do you prepare? Like, do you buy different kinds of clothes? Where do you get them from? Anything else you want to share about the winter uh, season that you want to prepare? Oh, yeah, starting with that one. I'm kind of lucky because I have a winter in my country. I have kind of warm clothes, but in Canada, it's really windy. So right now, me and my friends, we're buying warm clothes in Talese. So talking about Talese, it's like a thrift shop for students, for anyone. And if you're a financial student, you can get a discount, 10%. Can you imagine? Yeah. So mostly we're like buying the warm clothes there. And I'm also going to Goodwill. Like as a student, I'm buying the warm clothes in thrift shops, something like that. And sometimes you can get a discount like in Food Basics, like Walmart, and also Canadian Super, no, I guess I'm wrong, um, Asian Superstore. So yeah, we're preparing like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to escape it. Welcome to Canada. <laughs> That is so true. But I think Adinai has a tendency to, of saying something by, while laughing. So you feel like it's not serious, <laughs> but it is, right? So winter season in Canada, it's, it's fun. First time, absolutely it is fun. But again, just like anything else, you need to be prepared for winter as well. You should be prepared, right? So you should have winter clothes with you. Not try to just go outside without wearing a winter clothes when you arrive here for the first time in January intake. Uh, can I ask a similar question to Chizong, considering that Adnai has seen winter in her home country, I would say maybe Nigeria, she might have not. So let's see what she has prepared for winter season. Um, yeah, you're right. This, this is actually going to be my first um, winter in Canada. So I've had a lot of stuff, scary sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> I guess I just have to get ready for it. So. Um, some stores are doing um, discounts right now for winter clothes. Um, then, like I didn't even mention, yeah, Talese exactly. and Goodwill are good places yeah. to get. So um, we also look out for um, online stores that are doing discounts. Some are doing 40% off. Um, I think Mountain Warehouse or so is doing something like that um, um, next tomorrow. So yeah, we're actually preparing. Um, from what I've heard, this is a period that this is the best period to get good prizes for winter wear. So um, my friends and I are getting ready for the winter. Uh, yeah, so even, okay, um, heaters too are, are necessary uh, because the apartments most of us stay in may not really have the, they may have um, heaters, but it may not really be as effective as we want it to be. So it's advisable to buy your own heaters and put in your rooms yeah, to stay warm during the winter. Yeah, thank you. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. A really good advice in terms of buying a separate small heater if your place is not warm enough for you during the winter time. Can I ask similar but different question to Mahavir considering he has already been here and gone through a winter season. Do, what do you enjoy during winter season? Any activities that you have gone outside in the city that to try out different things in winter season? Yeah, 
Like first of all, I love traveling in winter. So it's uh, last year was my last uh, first winter. So I was so excited about the winter. Like in India, we get like minimum eight, nine, max, like that's how we have temperature. But like when I came here or the first day, I was like, oh, it's it's really cold. And I was like, I should buy some like warm clothes. I got it. So when the winter started, we have the some like. Uh, some spots where we can go and enjoy first of all i would like to like i went to the blue mountain oh my god this place is like heaven really man it's it's so good i went there i enjoyed like uh ropes uh scropes and tube riding and everything it was wonderful apart from that i learned how to do skis so we have like uh victoria park over so we can go and do our skis there ice skating it's 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 wonderful and I really enjoy the winter. I thought like it, it's going to be harsh, but it was not. I enjoyed it. I had warm clothes. I have good house at having like good heater. So I enjoyed it. You survived. It was, yeah, I survived. And I'm just waiting for this year. Like <laughs> it was good experience. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. You survived. That's the most important part, right? <laughs> Apart from that, even in London, because I've been here for a long time as well, I forgot to mention in the beginning in my introduction, I have been a student at Fanshawe College myself back in 2014 and 2015. I also did project management and marketing management program at Fanshawe. So I've been a student for a long time and I've gone through I would say eight or nine winters here. So it depends and it varies. But the activities that you can do within London, Ontario are many. You can go to downtown, as Mahavi mentioned, for the ice skating. Apart from that, we have Bowler Mountain here. Bowler Mountain is a place which you can go by the bus uh, where you don't even need to pay for it because all of you who are coming full time, post-secondary students, your bus pass is paid. So you can take a bus and go to Bowler Mountain where they have ice tubing, snow tubing, they have uh, uh, skating as well, they have a snowboarding as well. So many activities that you can enjoy during the winter time, absolutely. Apart from that, Fanshawe, as a college, we have Fanshawe Student Union, which organizes multiple events throughout the winter time. So it's not like it's a ghost town when winter arrives. It is when people say winter is here, it is the fun is also here. So. Uh, looking forward for all of you who are planning to come here in January. Feel free when you arrive here to stop by at the International Center and share your experiences if you go to any of these trips and enjoy the things that um, Mahavir has mentioned here. Moving on to a little bit of different topic from fun and games in terms of winter, uh, work and study, right? Because most of you who come here might choose to study while working part-time as well. So it's really important to balance that. And I want to find out from Adnai, how do you balance your work and study at the same time? Well, I, first of all, I have to thank the college because my schedule is really convenient. Like I'm studying uh, two days morning, two days evening, so I can combine it with my work. And as a student, I work part-time. I guess in this case, Fanshawe is really helping. Like they know that you're a student, so they're providing you the schedule that you can like somehow adjust. And if you have like any problems, if you come with family, have children, you can talk to the professor. And professor professors, I mean, are able to somehow adjust, help you to like change the schedule, looking on your convenience. So that's how I'm working. And talking about the work, um, Fancy College provides some sessions, workshops, so there's always a chance you can get hired, noticed. So no worries, you're going to find a job here and you will be able to combine with studies. But I will tell you, don't be lazy and don't focus on the work only. Like, <laughs> Don't forget about like keeping your grades decent, try to pass all the subjects because you're not going to retake it, right? It's going to be kind of expensive, so... Yes. <laughs> Every time when I go to ask questions to Adina, I, I have to mention, don't look at her face. When she's smiling, that's not, that doesn't mean that she's it's not serious scary. about the topic. She's mentioning that you should work, but also manage your schedule and also focus on the study. Can I ask the same question to Dristi in terms of how do you balance your work, part-time work, as well as the study? Um, now that I'm in my level four, so uh, the academic standard has gone a little bit higher, which demands more of my attention to studies. So these days I'm just doing three days a week because other days I have a lot of college assignments, a lot of lectures. Like like just today I have lecture from 2 to 7 p.m. So you can just imagine it's 
it's hectic days but also um there's a solace in the hectic that i'm going through you know what i mean so um i think that is how i'm balancing at the moment so i i work only when i feel like it's convenient for me when i'm done with all of the college assignments when i'm done with the college burden then only i go to work otherwise i tend to let go of work and focus more on college because that is what i came for at the first reason right amazing thank you for sharing that that is correct that's the number one reason when why you came here you came here to study first then work part time can i ask the same question to chisholm just to see her experience in terms of uh, being in the supply chain program and also working part time in the same industry how are you balancing your work and study um okay so i can work for only 3 days in a week because um my program is actually um very um um time consuming there are lots of there are lots of assignments to do and quizzes every almost every day there's a task to do so um i try not to allow work um take um most of my time because it's going to affect my grades so um i make sure i create time every day to do my school work and um uh, so it's only when i'm flexible flexible enough to go to work only when um it's convenient for me here yeah, because um i wouldn't want it to affect i wouldn't want the work to affect my grades yeah so that's how i've been managing um the balance here amazing thank you for sharing that i totally agree that you would not want to affect your work your study right so again i cannot emphasize enough how important it is to focus on your study and then the part time work moving on to a little bit of fun question because considering all of you have been here for a long time uh, i would go with adnai to start with which is which mobile application are essential for students when they arrive here if you can share a little bit of idea in terms of what kind of mobile application you use every day i'm not talking about social media stuff of course everyone who comes here they're going to use tiktok or whatsapp or instagram or facebook or youtube i'm talking about any essential mobile application that could help a student when they arrive here okay i will start with instagram <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, we have like different groups more than official Fairfax International, like Fairfax College. In those groups, you can find jobs, talk to mm -hmm. current students somehow. But today, I will start with apps that you can download in Apple Store or Play Market. Personally, I use Pulse, so this app gonna help you to follow the deadlines to your homeworks, follow up the notification about college events, like all that gonna refer to studies. The second one is um my god flip it's the app where you can compare the prices between like shops yeah you can see it on the yeah you can see it on the screen so this is my screen you can see flip there pulse food basics it's also an app where you can get a discount like get some points and exchange it for getting free products uber you're going to need it if <laughs> you're going to be late on interviews Team Hortons if you're a Fairfax College student you will be obsessed with Team Hortons I'll tell you the Fairfax Fitness app if you're really into fitness and you wanted to join some sessions I'm joining yoga using this app Fairfax show stay safe like it's literally the most important thing if you're not feeling comfortable or you like feeling kind of safe you always can use this app let the college know and they're going to help you out LinkedIn and Indeed it's the platforms where you can find the job and of course google maps google maps <laughs> like i have been lost like three times i guess i was in another city like it was like i don't know i took the one bus so <laughs> i'm telling you you're going to use this apps really often right thank you so much for sharing that i will just keep continue mentioning the same thing she said i was lost in the city but without using google map and she was laughing about it so again take it seriously install google map or ltc which is the london transportation corporation here that is providing the transportation by bus you can download ltc app or you can search on google to see exact time when the bus will arrive at the bus stop and how long it will take to reach from one point to another point another app that i really like what you mentioned here adna is flip f l i p p that's an application which you can install when you arrive here that application provides the access to all the flyers 
Now, you might have not used it in your home country, but flyers in Canada are really important. They gives you an access to what is the pricing for a particular product or food items that you are looking for, whether it's fruit, vegetable, whatever it is, that gives you a clear idea how much you will need to pay for when you go to the store. So install Flip and every other application that uh, Adnai mentioned here. I would also like to ask the same question to Chisholm. Do you have any preferred application or a list of it that you would say uh, students should have? Um, most of the um, most haves have already been mentioned by uh, Adonai. So first on my list is actually the Pulse app. <laughs> so with that app, um, students are less likely to miss important deadlines for their assignments, um, quizzes, and projects. So you need to install it um, uh, immediately, probably before coming here. It's really going to be very helpful for you. Then in addition to what was mentioned, um, I think the weather app is also very important. Mm -hmm. Weather network app, yeah. Oh, so yeah. you need to have this app so that you, you have real-time information of the weather. Most, um, most importantly, before going out um, during the day, so that you know if it's going to be very hot or it's going to be very cold so that you can dress appropriately um, in advance, yeah, and also know when there's going to be, um, okay, like how we're entering winter, when there's going to be a snowstorm and all that. It gives real-time information, so I believe it's among the very important apps to have as students here. 100%. I cannot emphasize more on what Chisholm said in terms of using weather app, because, again, not to scare you, but just giving an, a clear idea to everyone who's not been here, right? Who doesn't know Canadian weather? Sometime uh, during this time of the fall year, weather would start early in the morning. It might be really hot. By the afternoon, it would rain. And by the evening, it's like 10 degree or 8 degrees or sometimes zero even, and it gets cold. So the weather changes constantly throughout the day at any time of the year. And weather app is the only way to be aware about it. Apart from that, I think the only thing I would mention, not an application, but accounts to follow, as you can see on the screen, you can follow us on Instagram at Fanshaw underscore international. Similarly, you can follow us on Facebook as well, or YouTube or LinkedIn, all these social media platform or networking platform. The reason I'm saying it is not just to increase the followers base for that we have, but also any important updates. For example, say you arrive in January intake and one day in January month during your work day or a class day, there is a snowstorm and college decides to close the campus for the day because of a heavy snowfall and not a good condition of transportation. All those updates you will get on our social media. So we will immediately update any important updates that are happening, any important events that are happening on campus. So it is really important to follow not just Fanshawe International social media account, but also every other social media accounts that we have, whether it's for Fanshawe College, Fanshawe Student Union, or the account for the school that you will be uh, studying in. So if you're applying for business school, they have a different social media account as well. So many things to follow, many things to look at and make sure you are aware of when you arrive here. <clears throat> Moving on to the next uh, question might be a little bit important as well, which is, have you felt homesick when you came here? Or and if you did feel homesick of coming here as an international student, how did you cope with it? Can I ask it to Drishti? Yes. Like because this was the very first time that I am away from a family. Like I have never stayed away from a family and coming to Canada was a very big decision in my life. So like in the initial days when I was not used to it, even when I saw people walking with their families, I used to feel so, so, so jealous of them. And I literally felt like crying whenever I saw people with their families because I missed all of the good times that I had with my family and all that I could do was crave for a good time with them. Um, and how did I cope was, I, I just talked to myself mostly. So what I said to myself was, well, it's not like I'm gonna stay with them forever. And then like someday or the other, I need to make a move and maybe Canada was the reason or Canada was the start. And I'm here for a bigger purpose and family, like they're always there for you. like whether they are there physically or uh, with, even when they are not there with you, like they're always there with you with somehow, right? So um, I remind myself that I'm here for a bigger purpose. And once I'm done with it, like there are going to be times that I'm going to go back to my family. So that is how I convince myself. And that actually helps. Like talking to yourself actually helps a lot. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. I can absolutely relate absolutely relate to the feeling of feeling homesick when i also came here back in 2014 as a student i also felt like that because i have never been away from my family and it was first time traveling even out of country first time traveling when i came here but the culture the classroom environments the campus facilities and services that we have such as fancho international so when you arrive here for the first time whether it's in january intake or sometime later next year absolutely if you ever feel homesick you, we are happy to support you. We are happy to chat with you. If you ever feel like that, just stop by at Fancho International, say hello, chat with anyone. And not just Fancho International, make friends, right? Because as they say, it, in, in a different country, when you are come here for the first time, your friends are your family, right? So the friends you will make here will become eventually your family as well. And then, uh, of course, your family is always there. You can always video call them or do conferences or group call with them. Uh, but apart from that, I would like to ask the same question to say, Mahavir, how have you ever felt homesick when you came here and how do you cope with that? Uh, uh, I'm not the kind of person who feels homesickness, uh, honestly. Uh, I had done my graduation apart from my city, so I was kind of like used to this thing like staying away from family. I used to tell my father that I will go like like so far that I will not come back. And But right now, <laughs> right now I feel that I need to go my home. I really need to be like with my family because the love and the care they have, I, I'm really craving here. So we have to do our own stuff like from washing our clothes or washing the dish, making the food. At home, at least we can have like a mom can cook for us and we can have the best <laughs> dinner. But here... <laughs> oh my god uh, if i go to like a five star hotel i can't have the food like that my so yeah i feel uh sometimes homesickness when i'm so tired of my work and studies so yeah at the moment we feel like oh i want to go back then no but this is what i choose now i am here and i'm coping with the homesickness and yeah i go with my friends i have like a lot of friends i, I i'm just i just make friends so whenever i feel something i go their home i spend with the time for example, I just it was my roommate, so when we had like something that I used to go and we just to talk and I feel like good. So yeah, this is how I cope with the homesickness. <laughs> but I really miss my family. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, can I move on to the next question? Uh, from the homesickness to having a support of friends and also the culture here. From that, can I ask Adinai? What surprised you the most about Canadian culture when you arrived here, whether it was, it was in the classroom or outside of the classroom? With Tim Hortons, like literally, everyone is obsessed with Tim Hortons in Canada. And somehow I'm obsessed with you guys. Like, let's raise Tim Hortons right now. We're not paid for promotion, but that's fine. But to be, to be honest, uh, the way the Canadian people, the Canadian culture, like everyone here treats you, it's really different. Like, no one is judging. No one's like making laugh of your accent. They always open and welcome to help you out. And I really like the attitude towards each other. Like it's so respectful. I think it's because like the di diversity, I guess. And I also would like to mention that uh, <laughs> the weather is here so cold. That's why I guess people trying to be more warm to each other. Look, it's a fact. The greener country, the kinder <laughs> people. And here in Canada, I witnessed that one. I was always not believing my mom when she was saying that. But <laughs> and animals, like Canada is so big and you can see animals everywhere and people are not touching them. And animals are so like sometimes annoying, but so <laughs> friendly with <laughs> people. Like in my country, you're not gonna see animals often, but here you can even like sitting. You're gonna sit on the branch. The like squirrel gonna approach you, took your bed, and get away. Like it's <laughs> so peaceful here. You're living with animals along, like on the one level. So yeah, I think it struck me most in the in Canada culture. Yeah. I can I can see that you wrote a note about it when you say that Canada is so cold that people are warm here with each other. That is a great thing to say. I mean, I could not think about it, but I totally agree. People are really warm to each other. They are very welcoming yeah. and absolutely understand the part where you say that nobody 
is judging you no based way. on your accent, based on the country you are from. You can always be yourself and also mix with each other because everyone respect each yeah. other's culture, right? So that's a fantastic thing to say about Canadian culture. Can I ask Drishti, not about Canadian culture, but any like things that you can say that you observe that everyone do in Canada and in terms of a culture, say whether it's saying thank you or something else. So any three things that comes to your mind that you have observed Canadian people do and that also now you are doing the same thing. Thank you. Thank you and sorry and everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> I've become one of the most kindest person after I came to Canada because you will hear me say thank you and sorry after every sentence. Yeah. <laughs> the second thing is just like how Ed and I mentioned, it's about the obsession with coffee. Oh, yeah. I, I have started doing the same too. <laughs> like every morning, Tim Hortons is a must. And the third thing is, life is constantly happening here. Like, whether it's day, whether it's night, there's no pause. Life's happening, and I have gotten used to it. Like, in Bhutan, it was like, once it's like 9 p.m., you went inside the house, and you're not going out. But here, I'm like, out till like 1 a.m., coming back from <laughs> work. Safe, yeah. So life is constantly happening, and I think I'm getting used to that culture now. So those are the three things that I would like to mention. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. I can absolutely understand. Thank you. Sorry. It's part of it. Tim Hortons coffee in the morning is absolutely part of it. Like I, I'm really enjoying the conversation we are having here and the things that you are sharing with our uh, viewers. So everyone who's on the stream, I see there are lots and lots of comments are coming in, but just for like 30 seconds, can I just have hearts for all the students here on the panel who are sharing their experiences and provide you a first-hand experience on the session here. So just the hearts I want to see for 45 seconds, and then we will continue with the next question. Let's see if people are hearing or they are just following <laughs> randomly on the comments. All right, so I will show the comments on the screen here, and we will see what do we see. Nice. I really like. So all of you guys who are joining us on the session, understand and also follow the instruction we are providing. I'm really enjoying it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing all the hearts in the chat here. And we will continue with the question here. This is going to be, I think, one of the important questions. I can see we are already more than hour and 10 minutes uh, in the session. So this is the last question from my side. But I will ask a few more questions from the chat that we have received so far. So now is the perfect time to keep uh, typing questions in the chat that you have for the panel here. Uh, the final question I will ask to each of you on the panel, beginning with uh, Chisholm. What advice would you give to future students? Anyone who's watching on the stream here, say they are planning in January, September, whenever they are planning to come here. But any advice that you would give to a future student coming to Canada about study, about coming here, settling in, whatever you want to give in terms of advice. Okay, so the first advice I'll give to our future students is um, to make sure the course or program um, you have selected to study here actually aligns with your interest and your career aspirations um, so that you won't have to struggle too much with your um, academic work. Um, uh, another thing is to be open-minded and, and be prepared for a multi-diverse um, environment. So. Uh, you're going to see things you never imagined or you when interacting with people you're going to be surprised at what other cultures do so you have to be open-minded um, then another thing i would advise is um, to make the best out of the opportunities that come your way here as you're studying um, join activities make sure you network um, because without people you can't really go far so any opportunity you have to network. Fanshi organizes a number of activities that encourage networking. So please take advantage of it, both on campus and off campus. Try to network as, as much as possible. It will help you go far, yeah. Fantastic. That were the, There was many, many advices that you just packed into one answer and really helpful. I can absolutely understand when you said networking. Networking is really important when you arrive here. Apart from that, the first advice that you gave about choosing the right program, it is important. I've seen many times students 
uh, choose a program that they might not be interested, but when they arrive here and they go to the class and they don't really enjoy it. So that should not be the case when you are planning to arrive in a new country, arriving in a new college, new education system, new culture, you should make sure that you choose a program that you really like. Right. And if you don't know that, you can chat with one on one with our educational advisor from your country. The list can be seen at fanshawcollege.as.me. I will share the link uh, later on in the session as well, where you can reach out and book a one on one appointment with our recruiters, education advisor from different country and chat with them. Find out based on your previous education history, whether you have done high school or college diploma or graduation. You can find with them and chat with them to see what other programs we have to offer that would fit your need. We have more than 200 different programs available on campus, right? So absolutely, whatever interest you have, we have a program for that. Whether it's a new technology such as AI or machine learning, anything like that, we have a program for that. Or if it's hospitality, we have a program for that. If it's uh, uh, creativity, arts, we have a program for that. So whatever it is, we do have that. And it, it is important to make sure you choose the program that you really like. Let's move on to the uh, Christy for the same question, which is what advice would you give to the future students who are planning to come to Canada or at Fanshawe College? I would just say, be where you are. Like, like let go of from where you came from. Like, let go of what stresses you, what burdens you. Just be where you are. Just be open to exposure. Just be outgoing. Like, go out, make friends. And I think that is how you will uh, be more confident and that is how you'll survive the initial periods in Canada. And also, I completely agree with uh, Chisholm or whatever she had to say about choosing the right course. Like, I'll give you my own example. I did political science and I'm here doing tourism and hospitality. And at times, I'm, I'm just like an alien in the class. You know, I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. And that's the worst feeling like you're you're here to study and you're struggling with studies on top of that you have to balance a lot of other things so just just be sure on what you really want to pursue and just follow your interest and just just be where you are that is all i would say thank you so much that's a great advice just be who you are and be where you are and then come here and then uh, focus on your study uh, let's ask the same question to Mahavir. What advice would you give to future students who are planning to come to Fanshawe College or study in Canada? So if you have a dream to come in Canada, not stop that and start living your dream. Everything is here. You don't have to fear anything. Like when I was in India, I thought like, oh, my English is so bad. How will cope with the Canadians? How will like how I will talk to the professor and all thing. But after coming here, I think I, it was just my like my thoughts, but I was just changed. And I really like that you don't have to fear for anything. Everything is in your hand and you can do it. And I will say not stop your dreams, like go after your dreams and you can achieve anything. That's how I saw my dream at 10th standard. Right now I'm in Canada and doing my course. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. Just go after your dreams, chase them when you come here. Everybody has the same equal level of being successful. And every student who comes to Fanshawe, more than 80% of graduates who study at Fanshawe College gets the job in the field of their program that they have studied in. So that's a great stats I just wanted to share and remind all of you that no matter what program you choose, the programs are designed in a way where we impart practical knowledge, practical experiences in the classroom assignments, group projects that prepare you to work in the field, in the job market once you graduate. Uh, Last but not the least, moving on to Adnai for the same question. Do you have any advice that you can give without laughing to our future <laughs> students who are planning to come to Canada? I'm just kidding. Go for it. <clears throat> so I was serious about this one. To be honest, I want to say that first of all, don't be afraid. Like you're not the only one. We all here are international students, so we always open to help each other. And you're not, you're not going to be the first one and you're not the last one who's facing the new experience, the new life. And if you're going to have like some problems, don't be afraid to ask people or like don't be afraid of seeking help in college. Don't be afraid to like how to say to say that you're not feeling OK, because from my own experience, yes, I will be serious this time. I had depression. I had faced some problems in the beginning. Of course, it's a new life. It's like. You have to adjust for a new culture totally. And thanks to the college, like they know that you're like 
totally new, like a baby born baby. So then they're going to do everything to help you out. And my advice is to follow up the social medias of Fancy College to know more about events, sessions. And the more you're going to like attend these events, the more connections you're going to make. And somehow you're going to feel that you're found your home. And the Fancy College is not just the college. It's a big family. It's a big community. So you're going to be safe. You're going to be <laughs> glad to be here and feel like me. Crazy, silly, and funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that and being honest about it. I agree. Like when you come here, you might face situation where you, where you have never planned before. It might be regarding accommodation. It could be not being able to par find a part-time job right away. It could be not being able to adjust in your program right away. But as Adna mentioned, Fanshawe is definitely a big family. We have all different supports and services available to you. If you are ever not sure of what and where to go for the support, just stop by at International Center at Fanshawe International, and one of us will be able to guide you. We have. Uh, uh, people working here who are called student life coordinator. They are not advisor or anything. They are called student life coordinator for a reason. They are help. They are able to help you in terms of coordinating your life, whether it's choosing a different program, a second program that you want to apply to, or whether it's finding accommodation, or it's just settling down and have a fun chat with them just to be comfortable in the environment that you are coming into. So we are absolutely happy to help you. And that is in terms of the question from my side. It's the end of it. What I would do now is I will go to the comments in the chat and hopefully I'm able to read them because I see the chat is flying by. So I will look at the questions that are being asked in the chat and I will just go randomly uh, with our student panel in terms of asking them. So let me see what questions do we have. This is the best time to start typing questions that you have for our panel here in the chat. Let me just go through them. I'll see. Give me a few few seconds here. Okay. Do you help international students secure accommodation? Canada is experiencing housing crisis. All right. So uh, for Cami's question, in terms of do you help international students secure accommodation, I will take this question because uh, yes, we do help finding the accommodation. We don't help in terms of securing the accommodation, but we do give you all the guides and resources, the links that you can go through, the, the listings that we have uh, at Fanshawe or outside of Fanshawe that are approved or official, right? So we are absolutely happy to help you in terms of guiding uh, for accommodation. But uh, in terms of finding on your own, I would just say, I would let me ask Adnai, how did you find the accommodation apart from the first time when you uh, you were scanned, but after that, how did you find the accommodation? If you would like to share some tips for Kami, any links or websites that you went to or any advice you have. So I was using a uh, marketplace on Facebook to find accommodations. Sometimes you have to be really careful, like check the real agents, check the numbers, see them in person, see the rent. You always have to have this rent document. And some people are like uh, joining this little communities on for like Facebook groups and they also can find some rooms there. So you also can join international student community. Do we have an Instagram? Right? Yeah, yeah, we, we have. have an Instagram, I guess, because my friend found her found her room there. Yeah. So you have to just be more active in social medias. And if you have like really, really big problem with it, you always can like uh, ask the college. They have a lot of specialists that can help you out. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. For the next question, uh, who would want to go for it? So the question is, how far is the downtown campus from London campus? Please share how long it takes by the bus to go there. Um, yes. uh, <laughs> it will take like 15 to 20 minutes if yeah. you go, go from London cam main campus to the downtown. So it's just by nearby, like I think four kilometers, I think so. So we have like a lot of bus to go there. So we don't have to stand in line to wait the bus. We have like 20, 101, 91, a lot of bus. We have express bus too. So you can reach in 10 minutes. Yeah. And you forgot to mention that we have student cards that we can use. So all the buses are free. Yeah. Privilege of being student of fan Yeah, as a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that we have fan cards. So like we get a discounts and we don't have to pay for like bus and all thing passes. That's you have this power. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Let's go to the next question. I would just pick uh, Adnai to answer this, which is, how's the exam conducted in Fanshawe? Either 
is it assignments or is it written exam? Oh yeah, and also so the other question that also relates to this. So the one semester gonna last four months and every two weeks we have tests. Like, so for example, you're studying like two, three, four chapters within two weeks. In the end of the second week, you're gonna have this assessment test and every test you have to try to do the best. And overall, in one month, you have like four official tests, I guess. It depends on your program. So sometimes it's quizzes, sometimes it's projects. It depends on the subject too. Yeah, I guess I answered it. True. Can I, I would like to add a couple of things. Uh, so for from Adina's experience, it is correct based on her program. But to answer for uh, Shika, the how the exams are conducted in Fanshawe, it depends. Yeah. It depends on your program. If you're in supply chain, you might have a different structure of exam or assignments, or if it could be a written exam or it could be just assignments that you are doing throughout the semester. If you are in the hospitality program, the exam could mean you are doing something practically. If you're in tourism, I would let Tristy speak for it and then let's see what she has to say. Um, so for my course, it's like, 60% is assignment based and 40% is dependent on the written exams yeah. that we do. And yeah, a bigger component is the assignments that we do because it, it carries the major mark. And for some reason, if you're not able to perform well in your exam due to some personal reason or because you were not very attentive or because you were going through something, then you always have that backup that the assignment can pull you up because to pass a semester, you at least need 50% in both written and assignments. So yeah, that is how we do things in tourism and hospitality. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I have another question here, which is, please, can we see the apps needed again? Absolutely, I'm happy to show, show the apps. Give me one second. So on the screen, you can see the apps that were mentioned by Adnai and all the other student panelists here as well. Uh, Flip, Pulse, Food Basics, Uber. You can take a screenshot while you see it on the screen. Might be easier. And then you can keep a note of it, download them, and then utilize when you arrive here. All right. Let me look at other questions. Uh, where is it? Shuttle services. Where is it? Can we, from Pearson to the... Let me see. But I, I let me check a couple of other questions. Session on Toronto campus. Okay, so that's a great question in terms of session on Toronto campus. It's new, so we don't have details about Toronto ILEC campus. Absolutely, Fanshawe Toronto at ILEC is a brand new campus. We opened that last year, and we are considering so today is the first time when we did a fan experience live session in this year 2023 but i've asked in the poll and i saw that most of you would like to see this type of session done either bi-weekly or on a monthly basis so what i can say i can assure you that the next session that we have we will have somebody a current student who has gone through Fanshawe Toronto uh, student life and will be able to share their experiences. So next session, stay tuned to your email just like you joined today. Uh, join next time as well, maybe in a couple of weeks or within the end of this month. We will have a, another student panel and then I assure you that we will have one of the students from Toronto campus joining us, so which can provide the answers to your question. Right. Again, I'm just answering these questions because I see them. I'm going through just one by one. The chat is just flying. Can they share their social media account? Who we? If we can share our social media accounts, I'm going to show it on the campus. The first one is Fanshawe International on Instagram, which is uh, at Fanshawe underscore international. So you can take a screenshot. Another is on Facebook. So fb.com slash Fanshawe Int. So Fanshawe I-N-T. And YouTube, you're already watching on it if you're on YouTube right now, so you know where to join us. All right. Uh, anybody who is from the co-op program can answer this. Will we be guided on finding a job during co-op? I'm back from a co-op opportunity. So yes, definitely we will be guided from 
uh, in my program, I'm taking tourism and hospitality. And in my program, COOP was in our level three. Mm -hmm. So they start training you when you enter level two. So the professors make sure that you have the right skills that you can use when you're in your co-op so that you do not struggle. Mm -hmm. And especially about finding uh, co-op jobs, we literally have an internship coordinator that is assigned to us who keeps a track mm -hmm. on your progress. And if you are struggling with finding a job or you're struggling with a co-op opportunity, then uh, they make sure that they help you and that you are in the exact same page as your classmates are. Mm -hmm. So definitely they help you. Thank you so much for sharing that. We are almost at the end of the session. I will take one last question uh, for Mahavir. Are Fanshaw teachers friendly to students? Oh, really? They are super <laughs> friendly because I had experience in the, my first course that I was so afraid that it's my first day and how will I like, cope with like all students because we have different environment in India, right? So I went there. So I had some problem in my like first assignment. I went to, to my professor. I name is like Dr. Karim, and he's like, hey, like I asked him like how's the thing, and he's like, he taught me like so. Like my friend taught me like oh, it it was wonderful, and yeah, we can ask anything, and they're so chill that if you ask their like question from outside the studies, they are happy to help. They are also helping to get us job. So yeah. I think they are the very, I think the friendly teachers we have over here. 100%. I totally agree on that because even I remember my experience as a student here. So when you come here, your professors are the number one resource in the market because every professor who are teaching at Fanshawe has gone through an industry experience. So say if uh, a professor is teaching in marketing program, they must have worked for a few years, five to six years or three years or 10 years, depends on their experience, but they have worked in the field. So when they come to teach in the classroom, they know what's going on in the market. And if you stay in touch with your professor, they could be the number one resource or a reference when you apply for the job as well. But I'm not saying that you should just ask for a reference to every single professor you meet in the classroom. What I'm saying is do need to talk with them, do engage in the classroom and make sure you are part of the, the environment that you're in, the student, and study environment. Don't be just a student who sits in the classroom. Uh, don't say anything. Come and just go out of the class without mentioning or chatting with the professors or engaging in the activities that are happening in the classroom. All right. So seems like we are almost at one hour, 30 minutes mark. I really, really hope that everyone who's watching it, there are more than 776 of you who are live right now have enjoyed what we have shown and what we have talked about on the session here. And we really hope to continue doing this type of sessions again, uh, based on your poll that we have seen and hope we try to answer questions and try to reduce a little bit of anxiety of choosing to study in Canada or at Fanshawe College that you're planning in the new semester or new intake. Uh, final take, I would like to ask if anyone has anything else to say, Adnai, Mahavir, Chisholm, Tristi, go for it. Uh, I, I, I would like to say something that don't afraid, go outside, meet new people, make connections. Like if you, if you came here, go outside, ask people, talk to them. You will find like a lot of resources. I will say that because when I came here, I was like, oh, this is new country. How will I do that? But I got like, I, I come over my fear and I start talking to people. And right now I, ha I can say like, if I want to go anywhere, I can find connection. So go, we have a lot of uh, events happening in college. You can go ask, uh, meet new people and enjoy the environment over here because you are away from home and you need something. So yes, go meet and don't afraid of meeting new people. Make connections. That's the again advice. Awesome. Anybody else want to say anything before we go? Yeah. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so if you are watching this session, that means that you are interested to come to Canada to Fanshawe, right? So I would just say go for it. Like you do not have to worry about it. Just go for it. You are going to realize that it's the best decision that you have made once you're here and once you're experiencing it. So I wish you all the luck. <laughs> we are waiting for you. Yeah, we are. Amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would also add that it doesn't matter like how old are you, because some people are really shy. It doesn't matter, to be honest. My classmates are so different. Like, 
the little baby, the teenager, <laughs> the parents, the grandparents. We all in the one level online. We're getting one vibe. And just follow your Canadian dream. Don't be afraid. And welcome to Canada. As, as being a student of Berkeley College, I can say that I'm living my Canadian dream. Sometimes I'm feeling that I'm in the main character in the movie. So, yeah. We all are waiting for you. Hurry up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, everyone, for joining us. Um, like Please, to, yes, yeah, go for it. I'd like to encourage, um, um, especially people from my home country that may not be so open to exploring um, other meals, that's meals from other cultures that um, you don't need to overwhelm yourself with so much load. There are, um, Afri there are stores here that sell African and Caribbean um, food items mm -hmm. that you can always buy from. But I'll encourage you to explore and try other cuisines. Yeah, it's part of coming. It's part of the benefits of coming to Canada. You experience a lot of things that you're not used to. Yeah, that's that's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And I would like to say sorry that I'm wearing shades. I got beaten by mosquito <laughs> before session. <laughs> Yeah. Um, please, please share that. What happened overnight? Why are you wearing so, shirts? Not just to look cool here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was not trying to be cool today, but thanks. They look so... I got beaten by mosquito before this session. Can you imagine how lucky I am? <laughs> uh, like, I, I'm so crazy. I'm being la la la, ha ha ha. But sometimes some things happen with me. I, I can't even show you. My one eye is swollen. I cannot open it. So that's why I look so cool today. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Once again, it's been a pleasure, everyone, hosting this session and moderating it for you. Hope you also enjoyed as much as we did and hope you found the information we shared throughout the session helpful. We will definitely see you again in the coming days, weeks, or months. Again, we wish you really good luck and uh, all the good wishes for coming to Canada, coming to Fanshawe College. Once again, as we say at Fanshawe, stay Falcon awesome. Take care. <laughs>